started. Hey guys, wanted to give you a quick update before I uh, hand it off to coach. Um, this morning we had an unconfirmed test result and out of an abundance of caution, we decided that players, coaches, staff um, that work inside the red line areas would work virtually today and Tuesday. Um, our training room remains open and we're still scheduled to operate on our normal regular itinerary on Wednesday. Um, we remain in the intensive protocol and this will have no impact to stadium activities like um, voting or anything like that. Um, obviously I understand you guys may have additional follow-up questions, um, but that's all the information we're prepared to share at this time. So with that, um, I'll pass it over to coach. All right, Coach, you ready to open up the questions? Sure. Let's go to Elena Getzenberg for the first question. Um, I guess, Matt, just to start, um, you know, getting the chance to watch yesterday's game back, I was curious if there's anything that stood out to you that maybe talking to us yesterday didn't think, or just things that stood out to you on watching it back. Yeah, yeah I, think, um, I think the biggest thing, Elena, was as I watched it yesterday, I thought um, – I thought a lot of our struggles in offense were related to the pressure that they brought with their, with their rush. Um, but watch that today, you know, we didn't have very many guys open. So it wasn't one of those deals where, Hey, there's guys running wide open, but we're able to step up. I thought um, whether it was of our doing or their doing, you know, Teddy didn't have many, uh, many, many guys open. So um, I think, I think really as you go back and look at it offensively, which is kind of overall, just not a very good day. Um, but uh, you know you can't. I can't really always see that on the field. I can feel the pressure on the field, but I didn't. I didn't see. Um, I didn't see many guys open as I was sitting there watching the tape. Um, uh, I don't think there's anything else. You know, I thought. I thought defensively, going back and watching the tape, there there were some you know really good things we did. You know, I think anytime you hold anyone in the NFL under 100 yards, it's 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 a good day. Um, but you know, there were seven of seven of 14 on third down, so that was obviously you know as I said to them. Um, you have to win the crucial moments in this game. So, you know, as, as we go back and look at it, anytime we, you know, we, we can't start the game off with a, a penalty, you know, I mean, there's too many crucial plays that we didn't make yet. We still had a chance to win the game. So um, uh, I think our, our my takeaway was that to, as I talked to the team today, I hope that they recognize that we have a chance to be a good team, but it's the team that plays best on Sunday that wins. And we just didn't do all the things you need to do to win. All right, let's go to Scott Fowler and then Josh Klein. Uh, Matt, I do have a football oriented question, which I'll ask right after you answer this one. But given that uh, that COVID announcement that Stephen had there, can you just tell me how you found out about that and how how it's in, how you think it'll impact you the rest of the week? I got a phone call at 448 this morning. Um, and, um, you know, it's like anything else. I, I just think, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take everything as it comes. You know, obviously, I'm, I'm, you can see I'm working from home. Um, so, uh, I look at, I, I try to always find the positive or anything. So I, I told our staff, like, Hey, take this time with no distractions to go back and really watch yesterday's game, you know, watch the weeks before let's find a way to improve in the areas where, you know, where we haven't played well. Um, you know, Tuesday, so Monday and Tuesday are usually a kind of look back and then a game plan day. So, um, it's provided that we're back in there on Wednesday, then, you know, I, I'm hoping that there'll be a, just a time for some introspection, you know, as I told the team, you know, anytime something bad happens, you lose a game, you're going to lose games in the NFL. The key is to go back and just say, hey, what happened? Why did it happen? Retrace your steps, try to learn from it. So, you know, for me, when I'm in my office, to be quite honest, Scott, like the, the, someone knocks on the door like every five minutes. And so today I'm up, I'm up here um, in my attic and uh, I'm able to get, you know, I'm able to you know, really kind of lock in and, and to the tape. So I'm hoping we can make it a good thing, but as, provided we can practice on Wednesday, um, which, you know, we're on track for, then I'm, then I'm good. My, I'm sorry to dominate. My football question, though, is um, can you speak specifically about the Teddy Bridgewater, DJ Moore connection or sometimes lack thereof? Their, uh, their stats efficiency-wise are, are kind of spotty. How do you think those two are doing together? Well, I think um, I think yesterday was the was the, the day that I felt like they started to make a connection a little bit more. You know, I know Robbie's been hot. I think I, I don't know what he what, what DJ finished with five catches yesterday. Um, you know, you throw that in with you know deep ball down the sideline, he gets pass interference on, and that's you know that's a six explosive play. Um, so I felt like yesterday they kind of got those things. Now, obviously, the fourth and two we want to connect on. 
third and two in the end zone. You know, we want to connect on that as well. I mean, that's, that's a ball that um, we, we can maybe be a touchdown. So I think that there's some, I think that there's some, you know, I think there was a, a commitment maybe from Joe, but also from Teddy to get the ball to DJ more, um, more often because he's uh, he has a chance to be explosive again, the pass interference. And then there's two other big plays. So you're kind of walking away with like three big plays. The one's pass interference, they put the ball down there. So I, in my mind, I'm like, Hey, that's a, that's a big time play, even though he didn't catch it. Um, but I think going into this game, you know, um, you know, I think one of the things in this game, Scott, is we really miss Curtis, you know, I mean, and, and that's part of the national football league, right? Like, but you know, he's made some big third down catches. So I think the ball went to DJ a little bit more, um, more often, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, um, I think all of us were just trying to get a little bit better at each thing. So I think uh, just amplifying DJ's uh, his role is, is an important one. And, um, you know, he, he, I think he had, you know, he had two other, he had, I think he had two opportunities that, you know, two drops that would have been big plays, one on an over route, one in the end zone, and then obviously the misfire on fourth down. So I think all of us left that game saying, Hey, we all just have to be a little bit better. Hey Matt, uh, I was hoping that you could, um, talk about a couple of specific plays. One was the delay of game um, after the long uh, catch by Robbie Anderson uh, along the sidelines. And then right after the Keith Kirkwood play where kind of the bang, bang play where he got uh, hit hard by Fuller, it seemed like you were having some animated conversation with the refs on the sideline. Um, I was just curious if you remember what, what that was about. No, yeah, I was, I, was trying to, uh, I was trying to see if he caught it. You know, because from my angle, I saw, I thought Kirk, Kirk, Kirkwood caught the ball. And so if he catches the ball and so I was asking if they did it and I was trying to, you know, I was trying to get a replay on the screen. I was trying to see the screen, you know, at, at, our, at our home stadium, uh, the guys in the booth can't really see the, the, the jumbotron. So it's us on the field have to kind of look up. So I was trying to look up and see if he caught the ball, because obviously I would have challenged it and then gotten the ball from wherever it was to half a distance more. So that was that, that call. That wasn't really towards the officials. It was really more towards um, our guys here. Like, Hey, did anybody see that? Um, then the one official came over and said, Hey Matt, I saw him drop it. So I just let it go. And then the replay showed that he did drop it. Um, and then the other one was just a, it was just a delay a game. I thought one of the things yesterday was really disappointing was we were up, we were up against the clock a bunch of times. I mean, we haven't had that all year. We had motions, all day that Teddy was having to, you could see him doing this all day, like, Hey, stay out there or don't motion. Sometimes that's part of the play, but we were, uh, we, we just weren't very, I mean, we weren't, we weren't on top of it. We weren't getting in out of the huddle fast, uh, getting the personal groupings in, getting the play in. Uh, I think sometimes guys, you know, asking questions, you know, just, just not a good day. And so, um, you know, that, that takes a toll on the quarterback when he's having to remind guys, Hey, do this, do that when he's up against the clock. So, I, I, I look at yesterday as, as, a, as like a, just kind of glo a global issue, you know, but um, yeah, that was just one that got away. And, and normally when that happens, um, I see it. I didn't see that. So that's, that's, that, I mean, that's the guys in the booth didn't see it. So that's just all around. And just to follow up, are, are penalties like that, like uh, delay a game, false start, offsides even, like, are those, are those even more frustrating than, you know, there, are there certain penalties that you can kind of excuse because of aggressiveness yeah. or whatever, but yeah, I don't talk about penalties of aggression, you know, I mean, we're going to play the game, right. That's going to happen. Um, you know, obviously pass interference has a huge toll, <laughs> but you know, I mean, you know, that, that is, I mean, there, there's some things that we want to win, win with technique. So there's like aggressive penalties. And to me, there's technique penalties where we're grabbing, where we're holding, you know, stuff like that. We have to get better at, to me, it's what I would call pre-snap penalties, delay of game, false start, jumping off sides on defense, um, and, and on a day when like, Hey, you know what, we're trying to, we're trying to slow down their rush because they have a great rush. You can't fall start. And on, you know, third and 11, we can't jump off sides and put them in third and six. And then all of a sudden the quarterback scrambles for it. Right. So like, those are all pre-snap things, which to me um, just come back to us. It's all about us just playing better and, and coaching better. All right, let's go to Miles Simmons and then David Newton. Hey, Matt, um, looking at Jeremy Chin in, in his game yesterday, just what stands about about him, um, you know, just the fact that he can do all of the things that he has been doing? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime you have a guy who can play free safety, play Sam linebacker and play Will linebacker in the nickel, I mean, it's it's unique. It's unusual. Um, I think uh, Mike Saravo and now Holcomb have done a great job with him. Just, you know, I mean, there's a lot to teach a guy, you know, and um taking advantage of his talents and he's making, he's making good plays. And obviously that interception was a, was a key play. 
sort of follow up on that real quick. Sorry, uh, just has there been anything that surprised you about him since he has been? Um... I mean, you know, when you draft a guy, you don't really know who they really are. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, you know, but his 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 character and his his care factor are so high; it's impressive. Hey, man, David, I got two questions. The first is, it appeared last week you guys didn't get a full padded practice in um, and be as physical as you normally are. Um, how did that aspect of it with COVID impact your prep and what impact do you think that might have had on the game on Sunday? You know, I don't know. Um, um, you know, it was what it was, right? So, I mean, I think we've gotten into a routine and kind of do what we do, and then we, we didn't do that last week. Um, I thought as a result, we healed up a little bit on defense and played better on defense, but, you know, certainly in some areas we weren't as good. So I hate to ever make, you know, I'm just, I live by this, Hey, don't make excuses thing. So I hate to make it come off like excuse. I just, you know, look forward to, you know, getting out there on Wednesday and, and putting the pads on and just kind of getting back to work. Cause I mean, that's who we are. We're a gritty tough group, you know, we're a bunch of, you know, we're a bunch of, you know, I want us to be a tough group. And so you know, that happens in practice. And I think our guys practice really well and, um, so I'm hopeful that we can get out there Wednesday and get after a little bit. And, and this, that was Derek's first. I know he's played without KK in the lineup before, but that was his first game when KK's out for the year. How did you see him respond? Because he, he seems to really be playing well the last month, I guess. Yeah, Derek, I thought Derek uh, did a nice job um, uh, resetting the line of scrimmage, made some big plays behind the uh, line of scrimmage. I think the biggest thing is he, he, um, he has to have the same mindset each and every day, you know, um, can't allow himself to get distracted and when he has the right mindset. He's a really good player. Um, and then he's got to do, do, just clean up some of his details. And I think the whole team does the coaching. All of us do, but um, you know, when you get in these tight ball games, right, where it comes down to the end, you can't have one play where you go the wrong way or you're making a mistake and he's gotten better and better each week, but that's the thing that's ahead of him, right. It's just continuing to master what he's doing so he can play without thinking and, um, um, but he, you know, he comes to work every day. That's one thing. You know, one thing I'll say at a high level, like he, he comes every day with a plan to try to get better, and that's why I think you see him improving so much. All right, let's go to Steve Reed and then Joe Person. Hey, coach, is there anything else you can tell us about the um, the, the the test? Was it was it a player? Was it a coach? Um, and uh, how do you find out about the unconfirmed? You know, when when does that become confirmed? Can you? Shed any more light on, on your statement that you guys uh, released? Yeah, I, I can't, uh, I can't uh, speak about that. And I, you know, I apologize to you. I know you guys have a job to do, but uh, that's sort of outside of my depth. I know if, you know, if you guys reach out to Bruce and Steven and the PR department, I'm sure they'll share with you what they can share. But um, uh, I just, you know, I don't, I don't have anything else to add. And Matt, just want to follow up with a football question. Um, is, is there any update yet on Christian? Is there any chance that he might, might be able to go this week or you know where do you stand on all that I know it's early in the week um I saw him you know he, he was coming in the building today you know um uh, you know we had to go test today and I uh, saw him he looks good so um I'm not sure you know I'm not sure if it's this week next week or the week after I'm not sure exactly where it is I know part of that's part of the rehab process but uh I'm hopeful we get him back soon you know I'd, I'd love to have him but uh whether it's this week or not uh, I'm not sure um not sure yet hey Matt uh can, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, two, two quick football questions. And then uh, was just one on the DJ play at the end. You said you wanted to see that on tape before you commented. And then, uh, and then what ex explanation did they give you on the FA personal foul? And then I had one other real quick. Yeah, on, on the field, just that uh, full body weight, you know, that you know, he landed on him. And, um, you know, that's a, you know, rough in the past or so. I think it was a clean hit, but just landed on him. And then DJ, what did you see there on, on, the, on the fourth? And then two? Yeah, I think uh, he, you know, as he's coming out of that break, I think uh, Teddy's expecting him to be a little bit higher on the angle. DJ went a little flatter and they just, you know, they just didn't hit. Um, you know, can I say it's, it, it's one or the other. I mean, to me, I, I look at things so like, you know, like, hey, we didn't hit it. <laughs> we didn't communicate on, you know, we just miscommunicated on it. It's one of those plays, you know, you run here and there. It's, you know, it's not, you know, fourth and two calls or, you know, you, you, you have it in. But um, I think Teddy's expecting one angle. He ran another angle and we didn't hit it. And so we came in as coaches today and say, hey, we have to do a better job of getting more reps and cutting, maybe cutting down on some of those things. And then finally, and I, again, I'm sorry here, but 
and you touched on this a little bit, but with this being Saints Week, when did kind of, what was it, Joe, who kind of came to you at one point and said, hey, you know, we really need to take a look at Bridgewater. I was familiar with him in New Orleans. Like, how did, was it Joe that kind of put Teddy on on the radar? Uh, well, um, you know, Coop, uh, Coop was the one who, you know, Evan Cooper, who was my recruiting guy and now a corner, he was the one who would always talk about Teddy, like, hey, if, you know, if we ever go to the NFL, this is who we should, this is who we should get. Um, just knowing him and his football character and his character. And then we saw him at the Sugar Bowl while he was practicing. I had a chance to visit with him and talk to him a little bit. And then, you know, fast forward as we were kind of, um, what we did was when we first got here was we made, we made um, for the scouting department to kind of get us aligned with the scouts. We made like at every position, the traits that we're looking for. Um, and then we made tapes like, hey, you know, hey, this is when we say ground-based power for an offensive lineman. This is what we mean. This is what we don't mean to give the scouts as they go out, both pro and college guys, to give them a picture of, hey, this is what we're looking for in this system. And I think as we did that, a lot of clips were Teddy um, in terms of pocket movement and, you know, different things that Joe was looking for. So um, that kind of translated into, hey, you know, this guy would be a great fit for the system. This guy would be a great fit for us. Um, and so when the time came, you know, um, we made, made a run at him. All right, let's go to Jonathan Alexander and then Elena Gutzenberg. Hey, man, I have a, a couple for you. I, I was just wondering, I, I'm not asking for like who or, or specifics, but I'm just wondering what's your understanding of an unconfirmed case? Does that mean inconclusive? I, I don't know what that, what that yeah, means. I, what is your understanding? Um, I don't have an understanding of that. I, I just listened to the doctor. I mean, I'm not being fun being dead with you. Like the doctor says, here's where we're at. I just say, you know, got it and, and move forward. So what exactly that means, I think you'd have to ask, you know, honestly, these people here. Yeah, I'm sure you understand where I'm coming from. You know, it's kind of fuzzy wording, but all right. Anyway, um, I, you said well, I yesterday. Think I don't think it's I don't think it's fuzzy wording because I don't think they're being fuzzy. I think it's just yeah. I'm just not saying process, they are, right? but yeah. I'm just saying it's not like super clear for our understanding. Yeah. But you know, you said you know it's clear. Um, you said yesterday. You know, you weren't really in a good mindset to answer this question. But um, what do you think about Jeremy Chin and his impact? What type of impact has he had? you know, on this defense. Yeah. And I just said yesterday, I thought it was a good day for me just to stick to today, you know, that day, but I think now it's great. You know, I, I'm happy to answer that. Like, I think he's, I think Jonathan, he's done a great job of filling multiple roles. I mean, I think if you look back at when we were sitting, I, I always go back to when we were sitting there kind of looking at like in free agency, looking at the defense and there were so many question marks, you know, I mean, um, Luke was gone. Some other guys were gone. It was like, who's going to fill the void. And, um, you know, we, we took him saying, hey, could this guy be a safe? You know, just thinking, could he be, you know, one of these positions? And the fact that he's playing multiple for us, I think, is uh, is vital. So he gives us he gives us the ability to, I mean, he's playing really well. He's doing things the right way, which I think is really crucial. Like, you know, we believe in practice. We believe in a certain brand. And we want guys who then fill in with that along the way. Um, you know, so him having success doing those things, I think, then speaks to all the other young guys. who are like, okay, hey, this is this is how we do things. Um, he allows us to, he allows us as we build the roster, he allows us to have a guy who can be a backup safety and be a, a starting linebacker so that we can carry, you know, we can carry different guys at different positions and he's made plays, you know, I mean, I, I mean, he's got made a bunch of tackles the interception yesterday was awesome. So I think what he's done is he's, he's, um, helped the team on the field. He's helped us with our roster composition, but he's also helped the team because he is, like if you said to me, like, hey, what's the type of mindset, what's the type of player you want? He's exactly it. Um, I want a guy that loves to play, plays the right way, but also comes off the field and practices and prepares and takes care of himself at a high level. Because, you know, you'll hear me say I want this to be like a serious football place. Well, he's a serious football guy. Like he walks in the building and it's all about playing good ball. And so that to me is that to me is the vital component that, you know, maybe you don't see when you watch him play but he's having so, so much success and he's doing it the right way that it just makes all the other young guys say, well, he's my same age. I want, I want to do what he does. Right. Elena, you can ask your question. Um, guys, we're tight on time, so we'll wrap it up once Elena's done. Thanks, Preston. Um, I just wanted to check. Um, you're probably not going to have an update, but any update at all on Justin Burris? Yeah, you know, just, Justin, Justin hurt his ribs. Um, you know, he, he, like, if we played today, he wouldn't probably play. <laughs> he wouldn't play. So... Um, you know, obviously I'm not there, so I haven't, you know, I texted him last night. 
but um, I'll probably have more of an update on Wednesday, but his was a rib. And if I could just follow up on that, Sam Franklin filled in for him. Is that someone you're comfortable with at that position? Do you imagine, you know, how do you think he did in the four, he played about a quarter? I thought, I, yeah, I thought Sam played really well. I mean, he got in the game, had a big hit. Um, there's been no doubt in our minds for a while now that Sam and Miles um, are guys. And I think, and, and, and I think one of the things we've been doing is Sam's been playing in some different packages, not a ton, right? But if they go, we have this one package, they go, you know, they go certain three tight ends, he goes in the game. So he's had a chance to get his, you know, his feet wet. And I think, you know, we were, we were thinking like, Hey, you know, cause Justin, Justin's been getting banged up. You know, we've been saying, Hey, um, you know, let's play Sam. I mean, Sam's got corner athleticism and at safety and he's a smart football guy. So he and miles both, um, we have a lot of confidence in. So if, if it's at any point where, you know, a guy goes down those two guys, you know, um, I know they're young, but you know what, they're here for a reason. So we're going to, we're going to put them in there and play them if, if need be. All right, Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. All right, thanks, guys.